On today's mailbag episode, we will cover a plethora of questions, talking about potential Dallas Stars GM replacements way down the road, talk about Miro Haskins' potential defensive partner on opening night and likely throughout the season, and then we'll close out the show by building our ideal Dallas Stars player by combining many different skill sets from multiple players on the roster. All coming up on this Friday mailbag episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily in-season podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the Stars Media, coming to you on this Friday, August 19th, and today's episode is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net is where the game starts. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener of the show, Thank you for stopping in and for making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube if you have not already done so. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. You can also find and follow us on your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. But let's dive right into today's mailbag episode got plenty of good questions again i don't always get to feature all of them but if you submit a question on youtube or on twitter do know that i see it and i try to acknowledge them in any way that i can so please continue to send in mailbag questions when they are brought up either on twitter or on youtube or anywhere else but thank you guys again for submitting questions and the first one we have today is a very interesting one and one that i maybe did not anticipate getting got it on youtube from zorg 729 he says seeing how it's been made public that nil will be phased out over the next few years who is your super early replacement pick for next gm uh, zorg thank you for submitting this question and this is an interesting one like i said because i personally uh could not really find anything story-wise, at least on the internet, that says that Jim Nell is going to be getting phased out over the next few seasons. Uh, His contract does expire at the end of this 2022-2023 campaign, so I guess there is the possibility that he could not be coming back, but I know many people reported and, and speculated that, you know, he went out and signed Pete DeBoer as the next head coach as a move to likely extend his time as the GM in Dallas. But I guess the question did say over the next few seasons. So I guess we'll see what happens with Jim Neal. Again, I personally don't really have a problem with him at GM. Um, I think he's done a fine job. And I think especially bringing in a guy like DeBoer, there's a lot of upside uh, to that move. And so we'll really see how things you know, pan out for DeBoer and for Neal over the years. But of course, it is always fun to speculate. So I, I thought I would entertain this question and it's hard for me to pin down one potential candidate but there were three guys that I found that I think could be potentially interesting prospects uh, maybe a few years down the line if either nil you know retires resigns what have you or if he eventually just has a contract that runs out and he doesn't get brought back to be the general manager of the team and the first guy that I think is incredibly interesting is Kevin Weeks Uh, and if you aren't super familiar with Kevin Weeks but you do recognize that name and if you spend any time on NHL Twitter you will recognize that name as the guy who has been breaking a ton of news this offseason He is uh, one of the members of the NHL on ESPN team, um, and he's had a really, really big year for them. And again, like I said, been one of the biggest news breakers on social media this offseason, whether it's coach firings, uh, coaches getting hired, players moving to different teams, especially when free agency opened. Kevin Weeks was an incredibly busy man, but he's a guy that if you go back and look at other articles and stories of teams in search for a new GM, Kevin Weeks is on almost every single list that you can find, and he is a guy that's been in several rumor mills for GM roles over the past few years, uh, more recently with teams like the Blackhawks and the Sharks, and even the Florida Panthers as early as the summer of 2020. Uh, Weeks, like I said, currently not in an executive role in the National Hockey League, a member of ESPN's NHL media team providing coverage there. And, you know, from everything I can see, and even from my own opinions, he's a very well-respected 
generally liked guy, a guy that has a ton of credibility around the league, uh, as we can see, even today at the time of recording this on Thursday evening, late afternoon, weeks, to my knowledge, was the guy that broke the news about Nazem Kadri signing in Calgary. Uh, he was at least the first notification slash tweet I saw about that. So a guy that has a ton of credibility around the league, well-respected, well-liked, uh, which would really be beneficial for him if he were to pursue a role, role like this. But he does have plenty of experience with the sport of hockey and with the league. He played goalie in the NHL from 1997 to 2009 for a plethora of different teams. And again, just has plenty of experience having been around as a player. Uh, and now, of course, working with ESPN, the, the quote-unquote worldwide leader in sports covering the NHL for them. So he has plenty of connections. Not shocking at all to see him up for a role like this. And whether it's with Dallas or, you know, some other organization, I think it's not too far out of, you know, the the realm of possibility that we could see Kevin Weeks as a potential National Hockey League GM at some point in the future. Maybe not immediately, but certainly a guy worth keeping an eye on uh, because of his credibility around the world of hockey. The second guy I want to talk about is a former NHL player, coach, and assistant GM and Scott Mellenby. Another guy who's kind of been floating around the speculation list, especially more recently with teams like Chicago and San Jose. But again, this is a guy similar to Kevin Weeks, who has been around this league for quite some time. Played in the National Hockey League from the 1985-1986 season to 2006-2007. 1,431 games played, 840 points. So this guy has been around for a while and was a pretty solid, pretty dang good hockey player uh, whenever he played from the mid-80s all the way to the mid-2000s. A long-tenured player and a guy that was pretty productive throughout the entirety of his career. Uh, his most recent role as far as an executive role was with the Montreal Canadiens, but he actually resigned from being their assistant GM back in November 2021. He was originally brought on by the Habs in 2012. Uh, to be the director of player personnel and did that role until July 2014 when he was promoted to assistant GM with the Habs. And before then, he was an assistant coach with the St. Louis Blues for about two years in the late 2000s. So another guy that, you know, it's he stepped away from a, a team that is going through a full rebuild and was a not even a little bit, was a full-on disaster this past season in the Montreal Canadiens. But at the same time, the Canadiens messed around and found their way to the Stanley Cup Finals back in 2021. Whether or not they should have and whether or not that's a legit uh, Stanley Cup run, as some might call it, he has to have a little bit of credit to that. And that, I think, adds some credibility to his name and completely understand why anyone would want to resign from the Montreal Canadiens in 2021-2022. So to my knowledge, and nothing I could find, hasn't picked up another job. So maybe be on the lookout for Scott Mellenby over the next few years to fill a GM role somewhere around the NHL. The last guy I'll discuss uh, is Scott Nickel, another former NHL player from 95-96 to 2012 2013 and recently and I'm, I'm, to my knowledge just as soon as he retired started working for the Dallas Stars rival Nashville Predators uh, he is the current GM of their AHL team the Milwaukee Admirals while also being the director of player development but also an assistant GM of the Nashville Predators so he has plenty of responsibilities for that organization wears a ton of hats around Nashville and Milwaukee I guess as well but if the Preds have a really good run over the next few years you can imagine a guy like Nickel could be up for a promotion and if the Preds want to give him that money then they can make that decision or he could maybe go elsewhere and try to find a GM role if the Predators have you know, a really nice string of seasons, deep playoff runs, uh, because he would probably get a ton of credit for that, working with the AHL team at a really direct level while also still working with the National National Hockey League Club as well in Nashville. So if the Predators have some good seasons down the road, it might be hard for Stars fans to swallow, but at the same time, maybe we could potentially get a good GM out of it. And those are just a few of the names uh, that I could find and that I could think of to be potential fillers for the GM spot in Dallas. Again, I personally don't expect Jim Nill to be on the way out anytime soon unless this season absolutely backfires and the hiring of Pete DeBoer uh, is an absolute nightmare and everything that can go wrong it does go wrong but again I don't anticipate it I personally don't really have a problem with Jim Nill so as far as I'm concerned I'm fine with him still being the general manager of the stars because they've had some pretty good runs and some pretty decent seasons over the past few years and even like the Montreal Canadiens were on the cusp of winning a Stanley Cup trophy just a handful of years ago.
Well, coming up next, we will shift our attention to the next question on this mailbag episode and talk about who should play alongside Miro Heiskanen on the likely top defensive pair this season. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your betting needs. Find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Find reviews and news of every single league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting scores and podcasts they have you covered head to bet online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening around the sports world betonline.net is where the game starts all right we are moving on on this friday mailbag episode of lockdown stars thank you so much again for stopping in for making us your first listen of the day. This next question comes from Dakota Scott, my man Dakota, always coming through with questions. And today he asks, after listening to your interview with Mike Heika, if you haven't listened to the Mike Heika interview, go back and check that out. Who do you think is Miro's best running mate for the top defensive pair? Dakota, thank you so much for submitting a question. Really do like this question. And like I said, we talked about this with Mike Heika on Wednesday about guys that could potentially run alongside Miro Haskinen on that top defensive pair. Last year, it was mainly Ryan Suter. Ryan Suter, as we talked about earlier this week on Monday, you can check out that episode as well. If you have not already, ate up a ton of minutes. I believe he led the Dallas Stars with time on ice and led them in a bunch of other categories as far as durability, played all 82 games. But now with kind of the shift uh, of what the Dallas Stars defensive core looks like, really the shift being that John Klingberg is gone and you have a guy like Thomas Harley who will likely be playing the majority of NHL games and the addition of NHL veteran Colin Miller to the roster. Things will likely look a little bit different this season for the Stars as far as their defensive pairings. Uh, you know, John Klingberg is gone, so now Miro Haskinen is the unquestioned number one top defenseman with the team. But now the question is, who will be running out there with him most nights and eating up the majority of minutes? minutes, maybe first or second on the team in minutes if Miro Haskinen isn't first or second on the team in minutes. And earlier this summer when making my way too early lineup projections, I know that Yanni Hockenpah was a guy that I threw out there as an intriguing prospect for that position mainly because of his size and also his handedness. This Dallas Stars roster and organization is filled with a ton of guys that are left-handed. Yanni Hockenpah is one of the few defensemen in this organization that is right-handed. Miro Haskinen is left-handed, so I think that could be, you know, make for an interesting match, as well as just his size. I think that their games are similar in some ways, but different in a ton of ways as well, and I think they could balance each other out with Yanni Hockenpah being this massive human being. He can be a little bit more of a checker, a guy that is a little bit more physical and a little bit more in your face, forcing the issue. Malmiro Haskinen can use his speed and finesse and skill to burn players all over the ice. However, as, as much as I like Yanni Hockenpah, I don't necessarily think that he is a guy that maybe he could crack a top four, maybe be on the middle defensive pairing, but I don't see him playing a, the majority of nights on that top pairing with Miro Haskinen. As intriguing as it might be, I just don't think that that's a, a realistic possibility, and I don't know if we're ever going to see more from Hockenpah than what we saw from him this past season, which was a fine output, but not not a guy that I think is going to be playing on the top pair with Miro Haskin. And Colin Miller is another guy that is certainly now in the mix, having been brought in another right-handed defenseman that the Stars brought in this offseason, more recently playing with the Buffalo Sabres, but similar to Yanni Hockenpah, I just don't know if he's going to be a top pair defenseman kind of guy. He's a guy that's just kind of been a middle of the pack player, middle of the pack defenseman, really wherever he's gone. He has a little bit of upside, but now he's just been in the league for so long. Don't really know if we're going to see this massive breakout season for Colin Miller, although I'm sure playing alongside a guy like Miro could maybe up your game a little bit, but I just don't know uh, if that is the right fit. I mean, and that's, of course, what training camp is going to be for to see what pairings work and which pairings do not. Now, Thomas Harley, a guy that Mike Heike and I were talking about on Wednesday, I think could be a potentially great candidate, despite both of them being left-handed. It is not a written rule that your defensemen have to be different-handedness, but sometimes it does help. But I think Miro Haskinen can really play wherever he's put at. 
uh, and really have no issue because he's that good. And I think Thomas Harley could potentially be the same way. Of course, we haven't seen a ton from Thomas Harley at the NHL level, but he's a guy, first round pick in the 2019 draft with plenty of upside and a guy that many people, fans, executive teammates are excited about and excited to see how he performs this season in Pete DeBoer's system. And I think he could be a great candidate to be a top line defenseman with Miro Haskinen. If he can be as special as many expect him to be, if he can be the player that the Stars want him to be having taken him with their first round pick in the 2019 NHL draft, I think you know that, that could be a really fun duo to watch. If he takes that big step by again playing alongside Miro Haskinen and that likely elevating his game and the you know abilities and skills that he has, I think that that could be a really intriguing duo. Uh, Esselin Dell, I don't really see it happening. I don't necessarily see Ryan Suter getting paired with him either uh, and those are really kind of these are the six guys I expect to be getting the, the the bulk of defensive minutes I know Joel Hanley is still in the mix as well he might could find his way in here on some nights if a guy is injured or needs to sit out for a game but if it just here in this moment at this time of recording I'm sure this will change throughout the rest of the summer throughout the rest of the preseason up until opening night uh, I'm sure that this defensive lineup will change and it's even changing a little bit from what I talked about back in my way too early lineup projection hence the name way too early lineup projection but I think right now a good mix and a good defensive lineup could be Miro Haskinen and Thomas Harley on that top pairing Ryan Suter and Colin Miller on that second pairing and then Essa Lindell and Yanni Hockenpah on the third you might could go back and forth with Lindell and Suter uh, both those guys, it would just feel weird seeing either of them on a bottom pairing, but I wouldn't want to necessarily put them together and put a guy like Miller and Hawk and Paw together. It, it, there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a reason why Pete DeVore and the coaching staff are on the coaching staff, and I'm here just speculating in my apartment talking into a microphone. But if you have any ideas about what the defensive core could look like for the Stars, please do drop a comment down below on YouTube. Curious to hear what your thoughts are are on what the defensive core could look like for the Stars this coming season. Because it's an interesting bunch, but there is quite a bit of potential with this bunch, I think. And they're going to be the backbone of this team going into this season. Well, coming up next to close out the show, we will build the ultimate Dallas Stars player. The person who asked this question gave me uh, a list of categories to pick from to build the quote-unquote ultimate Stars player. We'll dive into the details and specifics after another quick break. All right, we're closing out this Friday mailbag episode of Locked on Stars with uh, the final question of the day. Christian on YouTube asks, build your ideal Dallas Stars player using five attributes with Stars players, only using guys once, uh, so I can't use a guy multiple times. The uh, attributes are speed, hands slash playmaking, shot, physicality, and hockey sense. And Christian gives us an example for Colorado. You could do McCarr's speed, McKinnon's hands, Ranton and shot, Landeskog's physicality, and Taves hockey sense. Christian, thank you for the question. This is actually a fire question. I really do like this. And this was fun for me to think through and build. And this is something else that could, you know, potentially change in my head. I'm sure after recording this, I'll think, oh, this guy would have been great for this role. But as it stands right now, this is my ultimate Dallas Stars player. Only using players once. I'll throw out some honorable mentions for some of these attributes as well. And again, sound off in the comments down below if you would like to build your ultimate Dallas Stars player using guys from the current roster. Speed. This was a pretty easy one for me. Got to go with Miro Haskinen. One of the, if not the best skater on the team. I think the best skater on the team and one of, if not the best skaters in the National Hockey League. It's un undeniable. Uh, you can see it night in and night out the way he plays defensively with honorable mention to Rope Hintz and Dennis Garionov. I think both of those guys are talented skaters as well. Really speedy, really quick. But again, Miro Haskinen far and away takes the cake as far as the Dallas Stars. I don't think that there's too much debate there. And I think many people, if they were building their ultimate Dallas Stars player, would put Miro Haskinen in the speed category. Hands playmaking, hands slash playmaking ability rather is a, a really interesting one and one I had to think on a little bit just because of some of these other categories as well. But I ended up going with Joe Pavelski for this category and for this attribute with a, a, an honorable mention to Tyler, Tyler Sagan. Uh, Tyler Sagan has been a pretty good playmaker and pretty good shot creator throughout the majority of his career, but got to go with Joe Pavelski right now, especially when you think about his work in front of the net. We talked about a ton this past season, how you know he continues to work on his work in front of the crease or in the slot, deflecting shots, and even just the way he handles the puck on his stick. At his age, I think that he is one of the better playmakers on the team, despite being you know one of the oldest members of the team 
uh, and still in continuing to improve. So speed, Miro Heiskanen, hands slash playmaking ability. Joe Pavelski, shot. Got to go with the best shooter on the team in Jason Robertson. Again, honorable mention to Rope Hintz. Rope Hintz, a uh, great player on this team, but getting the short stick on a lot of my selections here. Jason Robertson, 41 goal scorer. I think there's a reason for that this past season. One of the best offensive talents we've, we've apparently had in Dallas playing hockey for the past few years. He's now one of four Stars players to score 40 goals in a season up there with Ben, Madano, and Sagan. A pretty exclusive list, and part of that is because of his great shot and his patience with the puck. And I still think that there is room for him to grow in that category, whether it's his one-timer uh, or even just his ability in front of the net and waiting for those pucks to either come his way via pass or deflection. But again, I think this is a pretty easy one. Uh, my shot selection for building the ultimate Dallas start would be Jason Robertson's shot. Physicality, the fourth one. This one was maybe the most difficult for me to choose because all three guys that I'm going to talk about here, I think could you know have a claim to this, but I ultimately am going to go with the captain, Jamie Benn, who had 137 hits this past season, but also recorded four major penalties, getting in quite a few fights throughout the duration of the season with, got in this, you know, attribute section, got to go with honorable mentions to Yanni Hockenpah, the team leader in hits at 206, and Luke Glendening, second on the team in hits with 175. Both those guys only accumulating one major, not necessarily going to go out there and fight guys, but guys that are not afraid to use their bodies for the betterment of the team. Jamie Benn, I think he gets the edge in this one just because of his willingness to fight for his team. Uh, loved the physicality from Jamie Benn this past season, and I think that that might be a little bit more of his role for years to come as we've seen the decline in his offensive ability and scoring ability. The last category, hockey sense. This was, again, a tough one just because of the guys that are already eliminated at this point. Would have loved to have gone with Joe Pavelski in this section, but I actually went with a guy who got honorable mention in another category in Luke Glendinning. And honestly, if Michael Roffle hadn't just signed to go play in Europe, I would probably pick Michael Roffle for this spot. But Luke Glendinning, as it's been talked about before on this show by me and by plenty of others that cover this team, he is an incredibly smart player who positions himself well. He just always knows where to be on the ice and the way that he can play both sides is pretty astounding. Definitely not a high goal scorer, but still can help generate offense on the offensive side of the ice, but then can also, you know, lay hits as we talked about him being second on the team and hits and use his physicality to help propel the team defensively as well. So Luke Glendening, pretty smart hockey guy, pretty underrated guy on this roster. Again, would have probably picked Michael Roffel, but unfortunately he is no longer a Dallas star. Again, sound off in the comments down below and build your ultimate Dallas Stars player uh, using those five attributes, speed, hands, and playmaking ability, shot, physicality, and hockey sense. Christian, thank you again for asking this question. It was a ton of fun to speculate. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for tuning in and for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube as well as your favorite podcasting platform. Help us get to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, you can find and follow me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis as well as our show. Just a simple at Locked on Stars. But I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We will be back here on Monday. Monday.